Hey everyone, welcome to lesson five of unit seven. This unit is all about trigonometry. Um, now that's a big word, trigonometry. We're gonna break that down for you in just a second. But the, we have gone through this idea of finding the missing side lengths of a right triangle, the missing angles of a right triangle, how to compare two triangles that are similar so that you can find missing side lengths. Um, and then we dealt with special right triangles, the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90, so that uh, we could use those, those similarities to determine missing sides, right? Well, now we're going to find missing side lengths of triangles that are not special triangles. They are right triangles, but they're not special in the, in the fact that there's anything significant about their relationships um, that stick out. So we're going to use this idea called trigonometry to do that. But before we do that, I want you to remember something. I want you to remember how to find the missing lengths and the missing sides of a right triangle. This is what we did in lesson one. Remember, how do you find a missing angle? Well, we're looking for the missing corner measurement, the angle. We know that the three angles in a triangle always add up to 180. So we would say 56 plus 90 plus X equals 180. And yes, it's a good idea to write out an equation for that. X being the missing angle and then 90 is uh, represented by the box here. Then we combine like terms and uh, subtract the 146 from both sides. So the missing angle here is 34 degrees. How do we find the missing side? Well, the missing side length would be uh, by the Pythagorean theorem. This is not a special right triangle. We don't have a 30, 60, 90 or a 45, 45, 90. So we have to find the missing side length some other way. Remember the Pythagorean theorem says leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So in this case, the leg is nine, the other leg is missing and the hypotenuse is 16. So we'd say nine squared plus something squared equals 16 squared. Notice I use a different variable than the variable that I use for the angle. I don't want to call it the same thing because they're not the same thing, right? So I use Y. So nine squared is 81 and 16 squared is 256. We'll subtract the 81 from both sides and get 175. And then when we go to square root it, doing the prison break and everything else, we end up with five radical seven. I'm not going to dwell on that step for, for too much or at all because we've done this for a long time now, okay? So that's how you find the missing side lengths and the missing angle of a right triangle if you have enough information, okay? So that missing side length is five radical seven. But what is the minimum amount of information that we would need to determine missing side lengths and missing angles, right? So here's everything we have, and I just converted my radical form to decimal form here. But here's everything. I got all three angles and I've got all three sides. What could I erase and still figure it out? So if, if I erase that side, obviously I can figure out the missing side by doing the Pythagorean theorem just like I did. If I miss that, erase that angle, I can find the missing angle just like I just did, the triangle sum theorem. But what happens if I erase that side? Could I still find everything? The answer is yes, I can still find the missing sides and the missing angle because I can use trigonometry, specifically because this is a right triangle, okay? So as long as you know one side and two angle measurements of a triangle, you can solve uh, any triangle. So as long as you know two of the angles and one of the sides, you can find everything else. In fact, if you know two uh, sides and one angle, you should be able to find everything else as well, okay? Now, um, or two sides and one angle, just like I said. So as long as you know three things, at least one angle and at least one side, but then either another angle or another side, you can find everything that you'd want. Now, in our case, in Math 2, our focus is going to be specifically on right triangles, okay? In Math 3 and in analysis, you focus on finding missing sides and missing angles of non-right triangles but we're just going to be focusing on right triangle trigonometry is what it's called. And that's what we've been doing for the most part anyways, okay? So trigonometry, what is this fancy, crazy, uh, nonsense sounding word? Trigonometry, well, if I break it down into three different uh, pieces, tri, what does tri mean? Well, tri means three, okay? Gone, gone like a polygon, right? means sided or corner, I should say. Gone means corner. So we're dealing with three corner something. And metry simply means measurements. So trigonometry 
is dealing with objects that have three corners and determining their measurements. Well, that just means we're measuring triangles. And we've been doing that all along. So it's just a fancy word for finding missing sides and missing angles of triangles. Three-sided or three-cornered things, okay? Measuring triangles is what it comes down to, okay? So now there's three new operations. Three new operations, and they are on our calculator, the buttons on our calculator. Uh, right now, we know how to deal with, you know, division, multiplication, subtraction, addition. We know how to deal with squaring and square rooting, but not a whole lot more on here yet. There's actually three buttons here, the SIN, the COS, and the TAN on your calculator that we're going to be using for trigonometry, okay? They're different operations. The first one's called sine, sine. The next one's called cosine. The reason it's cosine is because it's related to sine, and it goes a lot deeper than how we're going to cover it in math too. There is relationships between all these uh, functions or these operations. So we have sine, cosine, and the last one we have is tangent. Sine, cosine, and tangent. And if you look on your calculator, you'll see them abbreviated. Uh, sine is S-I-N, right? Don't say sin. It's sine. It, it is a sin to say sin when you meant to say sine, okay? Then you have cosine, which is abbreviated as COS, and tangent is abbreviated as TAN, okay? Use the words. Don't use the abbreviations when you're, when you're saying it. When you're writing equations, you'll abbreviate it. Uh, the, the, the abbreviations are on the calculator, but when you're talking, say sine, cosine, and tangent, okay? So three new operations. We'll talk about them more in a second. There are three new words that we need to be familiar with, okay, in a triangle specifically. Okay, so here we're talking about an angle. We know what an angle is. We see that we have a right triangle. Remember, in a right triangle, what do we call the three sides? Well, we call the two shorter sides the legs, and then the longest side, the side that's opposite the 90-degree angle, is the hypotenuse. But we have two new words for the legs. We want to be specific about our legs. We don't just want to call them leg one and leg two. We want to describe them according to the angle here. So if this is the angle that I'm given, this side is opposite to that angle. It is opposite to the angle. It is not touching that corner in any way. So it's the opposite. That's one of the legs. The other leg is called the adjacent. Well, what does adjacent mean? Adjacent means next to. It is touching that angle. Specifically, it's, it's touching the two angles. It's touching the angle that I'm talking about here, and it's touching the 90 degree angle. So this side, is adjacent, it's next to this angle. And of course, we already have a name for this side, that is the hypotenuse. So not really, th not three new words, more like two new words. The adjacent, the opposite, and the hypotenuse. The way I remember them is this. Obviously, the hypotenuse is what it is. We all should know how to find the hypotenuse. The opposite is the one that does not touch the angle I'm talking about. The adjacent is the one that touches the two corners that I'm concerned with. I'm always concerned with the 90 degrees, but I'm concerned with this other angle, and this adjacent side is made up of endpoints of those two angles, okay? So the first thing we need to know how to do when we're doing trigonometry is identifying our opposite, our adjacent, and our hypotenuse according to a picture. So let's go ahead and take a look at some practice problems with this. Uh, just real fast, all I want you to do is identify the three sides according to the indicated angle. So we've got in the first one, we've got a 44 degree angle. I want you to identify the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Same thing in number two and number three. Okay. For number one, here is my angle. This side is my opposite side. It is, it is across from, it is not touching the uh, 44 degree angle. The adjacent side is the one that's between the 44 degrees and the 90 degrees. So this is the adjacent. And then the hypotenuse is obviously opposite to or across from the 90 degree angle, the longest side here, okay? For number two, the 53 degrees is our angle we're concerned about. So I'm gonna start off with the adjacent. Remember the adjacent is the one between the 90 degrees and the indicated angle. So the adjacent is gonna be this side here, okay? And obviously, this side is the hypotenuse because it's opposite to, it's across from the 90 degree angle. And then the opposite side is across from the 53 degree angle. So opposite there, adjacent there, and hypotenuse there, okay? And for the last one, obviously, the easiest one to identify is your hypotenuse. That's across from the 90. 
But which one's the adjacent? The adjacent is the one touching the two angles. So it's touching the 47 degrees and the 90 degrees. So this is my adjacent side. And then the opposite side is the one that's not touching the angle in any way. So there's my opposite, there's my adjacent, my hypotenuse. And I just used the uh, first letter of those words to uh, simplify it, okay? So if you can identify the opposite, the adjacent, and the hypotenuse, uh, you're good so far. That's one of the two things that you need for trigonometry, okay? Now, trigonometric ratios. Normally, I do this crazy thing, and I'll do it in class when we meet in live. But there's this acronym that we use to help us identify the relationships in the trig ratios, okay? So first of all, here's my triangle. Remember, identify our side lengths. Our sides are the opposite, the adjacent the hypotenuse. This side is my opposite, okay? This side is my adjacent, and then this side is my hypotenuse, okay? Now, we have this word, this crazy word. We call it so-ka-toa, so-ka-toa, right? And what I say is, it's, it's just silly, just a way to remember it. If you ever watch sumo wrestling, right? You ever watch sumo wrestling, and these guys come out in, in their, you know, their whatever they're wearing, practically nothing, you know, diapers or whatever you want to call it. They come out there and they, before they battle, they do this ancient war cry and they, they slap their legs as they come down and they, they yell out, so ka toa. They don't really do that, but it just helps me remember it. So ka toa. Okay. So uh, this is an acronym for each word that we now know, right? Each one of these letters represents one of the words that we've talked about. So what is S? S is sine. O is opposite. H is hypotenuse. C is cosine. A is adjacent. H is hypotenuse. T is tangent. O is opposite. And A is adjacent. So how does that all work out? Well, it's actually broken up into three parts. There's the so, the ka, and the toa. There's the sine, the cosine, and the tangent relationship. So the first one is this. So we'd write it like this. We'd say sine of x. Well, what is x? x is my angle here. x is the angle. Sine of the angle. You always have to have a number here or a variable, right? The angle that we're talking about. So we're taking the sine of this angle, and what do we get out? Equals what? Well, equals something to do with O and H. Equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? So sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so. The next one is cosine. So we'd say cosine of x, cosine of x is going to be equal to the A or the adjacent over the what? Over the hypotenuse, right? So you can see it here, right? It's, we see S, O, H, that's the first one. C, A, H, and you just put them in the place that they belong, okay? What's the last one? Go ahead and pause it and see if you can come up with the last one before uh, you see me do it, okay? And then push play to see if you're correct. For the last one, TOA, well, what's T? TOA, T is tangent, so we'd say tangent of X is equal to O, A, O over A, so it'd be an opposite, over adjacent. So this is all new stuff. Don't get overwhelmed by it. Make sure you know this acronym. If you know this acronym, you'll be okay. And just a side thing, this is kind of how I like to write it. I write it as S, oh, gotta get it in the screen here, O H C A H T O A. So then it's already written at, in the setup that I want. Sine of the angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. Okay? So with that said, make sure you write that. Let me go back. Make sure you write this down. Do not go on without writing all this down. This is so important for you. Okay? So let's go and take a look at an example of what this is all about. Like, we're not going to actually solve anything today. We're just going to be setting up equations to solve. In the next lesson, we'll actually solve. So it says, write the trig ratios for each acute angle. Well, we don't want it, we don't ever do trig with 90 degrees. That's not an acute angle, right? It's a right angle. We want to do the trig. We want to set up the trig ratios 
for angle A, A degrees, and, and B degrees. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say sine of A. I want to figure out what sine of A is. I want to figure out what cosine of A is. And I want to figure out what tangent of A is. Okay. So those are the three things I'm asking for for A. Okay. Let me go ahead and draw the triangle here so I can easily identify these things. There's my right angle. There's A, B, K, M, and N. Now, there's a lot of things there. Notice we're talking about angle, we're talking about angle A. Angle A. So we are looking at this angle here. We're not looking at B. You can ignore B. You could, you could take a little whiteout pen and color it over. We don't care about B right now. We care about A. Identify the three sides based on A. Well, K is the hypotenuse, M is the adjacent, and N is the opposite to angle A. This will change if I'm talking about angle B, but I'm not. I'm talking about angle A, so angle A. Now, so I've got sine of A, sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse. So what's my opposite in this case? Well, it's N over, what's my hypotenuse? My hypotenuse is K. So sine of A equals N over K. Cosine of A, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that would be M over K. And then tangent of A is opposite over adjacent, so that would be N over M. So those are my three trig ratios according to A. All right? Let's take a look at B now. What if I wanted the sine of B? the cosine of B, or the tangent of B. What are those equal to? Well, we can't go back up to this triangle and say, okay, I'm going to use the same opposite adjacent hypotenuse, because now we're looking at angle B. And N is not opposite to angle B. So what we need to do is rewrite our triangle so that these things make sense. So there's my right angle. There's A, B, N, M, and K. But now we're talking about angle B. We're talking about B when we're, when we're creating these ratios. So in this case, here's my angle. Obviously, K is the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse will not change. The hypotenuse is always going to be the hypotenuse. But which side is adjacent to angle B? Well, the adjacent side is the one between the angle and the right angle. So this side is my adjacent, and then M is the one that's across from or opposite to B, so that's the opposite. Okay, so now notice looking at the two triangles, the hypotenuse is the same, but the adjacent changes and the opposite changes depending on the angle we're talking about. Okay, so that's why it's so important to identify those correctly. So now let's look at our, um, our trig ratios. We got sine of B. Sine is, again, opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be M over K. Cosine of B would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so that'd be N over K. And tangent of B would be opposite over adjacent, which is M over N. So that's what it meant when it said write the trig ratios for each acute angle, okay? Now, there's a lot of variables here. We've got We've got A, in this equation, we've got A, we've got N, and we've got K. We've got three different variables. We can't really solve to know what each value is until we have more information. And that's what the next thing is about. Um, setting up the equations according to the information we have to find a missing thing, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of that. It says set up an equation in order to solve for the given variable. So in this case, we have, we have 37 degrees, we have 90 degrees, we have X, and we have 7. So notice the information that it gave us. It didn't give us everything that, that we need, or it actually gave us everything we need, but it didn't give us everything. It didn't give us anything about this side, and it didn't give us anything about this angle. But I can set up an equation between these three values, the 37, the X, and the 7, according to trig. So 37 is my angle. So let's first identify the side lengths according to that angle. Obviously, this is my hypotenuse. 
And the adjacent side, the adjacent side is the one between the angle and the 90 degrees. And the 7 is the opposite. So opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So now we have to go back to our trig acronym. So ka toa. Okay, we've got to remember how to spell that too. So ka toa. We don't care about the adjacent one in this problem. So I'm going to cross that out. What we care about is the opposite. Why do we care about the opposite? Because it's a value that I know. And we care about the hypotenuse. Why? Because it's the value that I want. So you always have to have something that you know and something that you want in your equation. So I know the opposite, and I want the hypotenuse. So I go over my trig... Oh, I spelled that wrong. Shame on me. So, S-O-H. Whoops. S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A. So I go over my trig acronym, and I say, okay... I have, or I want my hypotenuse, so that means I'm not going to use tangent because there's no hypotenuse there. And so it's either sine or cosine. I have my opposite, so I'm going to use sine here. So my equation is going to read sine of the angle, in this case the angle is 37, is equal to opposite, which in this case is 7, over hypotenuse, which in this case is x. So this is the equation that I'm going to use to solve this. Now we're not going to talk about how to solve this yet. We'll talk about that in the next lesson. Right now we need to just make sure we can set up equations according to what's given. Okay. So with that said, here are two more practice problems that I want you to do. Um, I want you to set up the equations in order to solve the variables. You're not actually solving them, but you're just setting up the equations according to what's given. Okay. All right. So hopefully you've already done these. If you haven't, come back after you've given them a try and then watch this video, okay? So for number four, we've got this right triangle here. There's my right angle. There's 6, X, and 51, okay? Let's identify our parts according to our angle, our 51 degrees. This is my hypotenuse. Notice it's not something that I care about in this problem because it's not something I'm asking for and it's not something I gave. The x, what is the x? The x is the opposite, and the 6 is the adjacent. So we need to go back to our acronym, S-O-H-C-A-H-T-O-A, -H -H and we need to figure out which one is appropriate. Well, we have the adjacent, so that means we're not going to use sine. We want the opposite, so that means we're not going to use cosine, so we're going to use tangent here. We would say tangent of the angle, in this case 51 degrees, is equal to, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that would be x over 6. That is all I wanted you to do for this problem, okay? For number 5, looking at that triangle, you've got 12 and x, and then the 19 degrees here, okay? Well... Here's the angle. I don't care about this side because, oops, it, I don't care about this side because I didn't ask for it. I care about the x because that's what I wanted. Uh, that's the hypotenuse in this case, okay? And the 12 being next to the two angles, the 19 degrees and the 90 degrees, is my adjacent side. So I want my hypotenuse. I have my adjacent. Which trig acronym is it? Which part of the trig acronym? It's going to be cosine. So we would say, Cosine of 19 degrees is equal to, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent is 12, and hypotenuse in this case is x. So that is my equation to solve for number 5. Okay. So all we were doing today was identifying our opposite, our adjacent, and our hypotenuse, and then setting up equations according to this acronym. Right? we got to know sine what sine is, what cosine is, and what tangent is. If you have any questions, please comment below or wait till we get to a tutoring session or when I see you again. But otherwise, I hope you found this helpful. I will talk to you all later.